Returning to my Coin Lady channel, I am pleased to see you again. The CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, recently dropped a bombshell on the Thinking Crypto podcast while discussing Tether and the R, L, U, S, and D stable coins. BG has previously brought up Tether and the US government's pursuit of USDT. With the US dollar not going back to 1 to 1 and no evidence of reserves, the US dollar is not secure and will collapse at some point. I seriously doubt that our market share will be the same in two years, even though BG claims that it might keep growing. Thus, we may witness the US dollar's devaluation in two years, which corresponds to the precise market peak on July 26, and if Big Short is correct, the market crash may not occur until 2026. This is because we still have Tether USDT. At long last, collapsing. In addition, we shall observe Tether de pegging reaching zero. A lot of people will lose money, that's for sure. However, this bodes well for the US dollar and heralds the continued dominance of Ripple in the stable coin markets. And this is analogous to, say, a scenario where Apple and Samsung coexist. In that case, the collapse of Samsung would be tremendously beneficial to Apple since more people would use Apple products, and Apple's market share would increase. It seems that the R, L, U, S, and D were all experiencing the same issue with Tether. After Tether's collapse, Ripple will become the biggest stable coin. Unlike Tether's USDT, the Arley's D is backed by one-to-one -one and will be compliant and regulated by the law. A representative from Ripple has announced that all that's needed is regulatory clarity for the Arley D, it's currently ready to launch, but the 1% approval is still pending. Guys, just to reiterate, the stablecoin is regulated, which is great news. This means that, unlike Tether and other stable currencies in the past, we won't witness the Arley was D, the pegging collapse. Additionally, according to Jack McDonald, the stablecoin is already existing on many blockchains. Currently, only Ethereum and the XRP ledger have been officially validated. However, in the future, other blockchains such as the HBAR blockchain, ISO tokens, StellarQuant, Algorand, etc. may also be added. Additionally, one of the largest payment companies, MoneyGram, has made a huge announcement, they have launched Stellar wallets that will allow users to send USCC cross-border reminiscences. Western Union makes an appearance during Ripple Swell events, where MoneyGrams are sent utilizing Stellar and XLM. The RLUSD and XRP might be used by Western Union. Things in the crypto sector are happening at a huge rate. There is TradFi's foray into cryptocurrency. Among the various services offered by our worldwide network and ecosystem are Stripe, MoneyGram, Circle, Bitstamp, PayQuin, Zodia, Custody, Chipper, Etherfuse, and plenty more. Stellar and Ripple both have enormous ecosystems. 2024 is only the beginning, according to Ripple's confirmation of XRP insiders from Swell. This is really a completely bizarre relationship between Ripple and the XRP insiders, according to Howard Moon, an XRP insider. From 723 on, 589 is just the beginning. The XRP insiders have been confirmed once again by Ripple. We get XRP insiders talking about a price of 589 and above. This is how we can predict that XRP's price will soar to unfathomably high levels. Now we have even another bizarre link between XRP insiders, Ripple, and the SEC. It all starts with Howard Moon in 921, 2022, and goes all the way back to Form C, which the SEC filed. The number 91 is also 291. On October 18, we reach the 291st day of the year. On tomorrow, October 18, 92,191, Gary Gensler's birthday, so, once again, guys, totally insane connection, we may see the SEC file their Form C. However, last night was supposedly the deadline for the SEC Form C. David Schwartz is here to address the whole thing. Have you been led astray by the idea that the SEC had until midnight tonight to submit a Form C? We have Breezy asking you this, David. According to David Schwartz, the SEC matter should be closed since he missed the appeal date. However, he admits that he isn't an expert on the appellate procedure, 
so he isn't sure what's happening. According to Salim, the SEC is well aware of the rules' clarity and has not missed its deadline. Ultimately, aren't they the ones who know best? This one also gets a response from David. According to him, it seems likely. It's quite unlikely that they intentionally detonated a filing to terminate their repeal, but it would be an incredibly strange action nonetheless. The case should be closed now, but anything can happen at any moment. Greg has given us. Much like yesterday, today was fantastic. It was a fantastic day, BG, 123, David Schwartz, and Brad Garlinghouse. Guys, XRP is having a fantastic day if the SEC isn't truly pursuing their appeal. Finally, XRP attorney Fever Spoli says, I wouldn't get too excited about an untimely Form C filing. He adds that appellate courts give federal agencies like the SEC a lot of leeway, so even a weak excuse will probably be enough to get the court to let it slide. So we could see the SEC filing their Form C tomorrow, but if they don't, then. This means that the case is most likely over. It is official, the SEC is not appealing. My video would not have been seen without you. Thank you for watching my channel and for subscribing. I will see you later.